Hello everybody. Today I'm making a pancake style holster for the Taurus Judge 4510 3 inch barrel. I'm starting out by tracing the gun onto a clean sheet of paper. The technique I'm using is the one that Sam Andrews showed on Hank Strange's channel. You start off with a strip of leather that's the same thickness as what you'll be building your holster with. Pinch the leather down tight against the firearm and make marks where the leather touches the surface below. Take measurements at several points on the gun, usually the trigger guard and the bottom of the slide on a semi-auto, or the cylinder and the frame and the barrel on a revolver. And now we'll transfer those marks to our gun outline. Center the widest marks over the gun and draw a parallel line down the top of the gun and then transfer the rest of your marks. Now continue those lines an equal distance away from the gun. That will become our stitch line. I'm drawing this pattern for approximately 10 to 15 degree forward cant. And now we're determining our ride height. You can position this wherever you want, but just don't get it too high up. If it's above the top of the cylinder, you'll lock the gun inside the holster and it will be very difficult to remove. Now I'm positioning the belt slots and blending in the rest of the pattern. In the past, I've always tried to avoid building holsters for revolvers. It's somewhat difficult to find the correct mold, but even more difficult is creating patterns for them and getting the stitch lines correct. I never had a good method for revolvers. The old formula that I used to use for semi-auto patterns was half the slide thickness plus one thickness of leather, and that is your stitch offset. And that would usually work fine for a starter pattern, but it doesn't work at all for revolvers. So what you've just seen me do is draw in the rest of the pattern outline, the top of the holster opening, and also a reinforcement piece. Now that we've finished the front part of the pattern, we'll cut it out so that we can begin creating the back panel. Just like we did at the beginning of the video, we're gonna trace the outline of the gun again. And then we will draw a parallel line along the sight line. This will be our stitch line. Place it roughly a quarter inch to 3 sixteenths away from the top of the gun. Trace around the leading edge of the holster pattern. And then now we'll draw some parallel lines that are the same distance, roughly 3 sixteenths to a quarter inch away from the gun, and transfer the trailing edge of the pattern onto the paper below. And then we can draw our sweat shield, or you can just make it flat across the top of the holster. Really, it's whatever shape or design you want. And then we'll cut out the pattern. Since I'm drawing a reinforcement piece, I need to transfer that part of the pattern onto another clean sheet of paper. So I'm just transferring some marking dots along the reinforcement line. And then I'll cut those out with my knife. Once my pieces are cut out, I will write the pattern style, the gun name, uh, right side or whatever to help me remember what pattern it is and which side the holster will be worn on. I usually only like to label the right side. That way, if I need to make a left-handed holster, which I'm doing in this video, I know by looking at the pattern that I'm making the correct side because I only have pattern information on one side the right side. And unfortunately, the camera's out of focus right now. Okay. 
And now I'm rounding off any of the sharp corners of the leather. I need to transfer my pattern marks to the leather, but since this is a left-handed holster and a new pattern, none of these marks are showing through the back side of the paper yet. So I just quickly made small marks with my awl so that I could see them when the pattern is flipped over. I'm transferring the location of the reinforcement, the belt slots, and the stitch line on the front of the holster. And then on the inside, I just transfer the stitch lines. On the back of the holster, I transfer the start and stop locations for the stitch line so that I know where my decorative groove goes. And then I transfer the stitch lines to the inside so I know where the glue goes. Now I'm beveling the edges on the reinforcement and the holster openings. I only bevel the sides of the reinforcement piece. Don't bevel the top because that will be a double layered area and you'll want to bevel that after it's glued onto the holster. And now I'm cutting in a decorative groove. And when I get to the back of the holster, you'll see why I marked those start and stop points. This shows me where to stop the groove. I'm airbrushing this holster with Phoebing's Pro Oil Dark Brown. And then I'll do a black accent around the edges. I'm applying four coats of dye to the front. In case you're wondering, I'm spraying the airbrush in a simple dye cabinet that I made that has two box fans in front of me with cheap air filters that help pull the dye away from me and pulls in fresh air from behind me. Now I'm airbrushing black on the inside. I'll do about three layers of dye on the inside. Now I'm spraying black around the edges. I typically do about three coats right on the edge and make sure to point the airbrush away from the holster so the airbrush overspray doesn't coat the rest of the holster. And then I feather in along the leading and trailing edges where the belt slot goes. The customer wanted a natural reinforcement on this holster. Right now I'm applying gum tragicant to the edges and I'll burnish the edges of the reinforcement before gluing it to the front of the holster. I typically burnish my edges on my drill press Cocobolo burnisher, but in this video, I wanted to do it by hand so that you could see that you can still get nice results. It just takes a lot more work. Contact cement doesn't stick very well to the smooth surface of the leather, so I'm scuffing it up with a scratch all. You can use sandpaper or there are special scuffing tools that you can buy. It's basically like a small file, but it's made for leather and it just scrapes up the surface of the leather. And now I'm applying contact cement to both surfaces. Once the cement has had a few minutes to dry, press the two pieces together and then gently hammer them to create a tighter bond. Okay. 
sand the edges flush. You can do this by hand if you have to, but this was a small cheap attachment that I bought for my drill press. The sandpaper on this drum lasts a really long time if you keep it clean. And then now touch up the edges with your edger. I need to dye the edges of the reinforcement black, but before I do that, I need to make sure the surface is smooth so that it takes dye evenly. I sanded the edge with some fine automotive sandpaper, or you can burnish it with water. Just don't use anything that would prevent the dye from penetrating the edge. I poured dye into the lid of my dye container, and as you can see, it made a small mess, so I'm just cleaning it up with rubbing alcohol. And now I need to burnish the edges of the openings with gum tragicant. There's other edge burnishing chemicals and solutions out there, but this is what I have on hand. But I would encourage you to try some of the other chemicals that are out there. There's not really anything wrong with gum tragicant, but it does block dye penetration. So you have to be careful about the timing of when you put it on. If you have to dye your edges later and you've applied gum tragicant to it, it may make it hard to dye the edge. And I believe some of the other chemicals that are out there don't have that problem. And supposedly they work better, but I haven't tried them. I need to mark the stitch line around the reinforcement piece. And for that, I'm using a craft tool adjustable creaser from Tandy Leather. And for sewing, I'm sewing on the Cobra Class 4 from Leather Machine Company. And I'm using 277 bonded nylon thread in the top and bottom. The thread color is black. Sorry for all the vibrations. The stand that this machine came on is a little bit wobbly. Now I'm pulling the threads through to the back of the holster. When I cut them, I leave them a little bit long so that I can melt them with a lighter and then flatten them. This helps prevent the thread from pulling through to the front side. And now I'm gluing the front to the back with contact cement. Before I can stick the pieces together, I need to dampen the leather. This will help the reinforcement area fold a little bit easier. It was actually very difficult to fold because the reinforcement piece is the same thickness as what I'm using on the rest of the holster, which is seven to eight ounces thick. I had to wet it several times off camera to make it fold a little more easily. I think if I had a third hand, this whole process right here might have been a little bit easier. The holster kept running from me every time I tried to pinch it together. Very annoying. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I don't usually make revolver holsters. I don't have a lot of experience with them. So this whole time as I'm making this holster, I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping that this pattern is going to work. Sam Andrew certainly knows what he's doing and he's been making holsters for a very long time. I was confident that his technique would work, but whether or not I was applying it in the right way, well, that's yet to be determined. My goal with this YouTube channel has always been about helping others learn this craft and teaching others what I know. There's certainly a lot of makers that have many more years experience and are much better makers than I am. But I hope that 
even watching this video, it will give you the confidence to try some of these techniques on your own and come up with your own and maybe teach others how to do your method. I don't want anybody to think that I am an expert or that I want to pretend to be a know-it-all because I'm certainly not, but I do enjoy learning new things and sharing what I know with others. I need to apply my maker's mark. So I'm dampening the area where I'm gonna put it with a little bit of water. And there you can see my stamp. We need to soak our holster in water. So this is some warm tap water with a little bit of dish soap. The soap helps to break the surface tension so it absorbs into the leather a little bit easier. It's pretty hot in my shop, so to keep the leather from drying out too quickly, I put it in the Ziploc bag so that the water can soak into the leather. And as you can see, the gun actually fit inside the holster and the stitch line looks pretty good. I'm driving a dowel along the sight channel to help give the sight clearance when you draw it from the holster. I'll be using a vacuum setup to help form the holster. If you'd like more information about it, I have an article on my blog about how I built mine. It's not absolutely required. It just helps to hold the shape as you mold the holster. There's also hydraulic presses that you can use that work pretty well. I don't actually have any experience with one, but a lot of people really like them but don't feel like you have to have a press of any kind to mold a holster. You can certainly do all of this by hand. I used to watch Norm Abrams on the New Yankee Workshop every morning while I was getting ready for work. And one of the things that I always picked up on was all the different ways that you can accomplish the same technique in woodworking. You didn't always necessarily have to have a super expensive tool to get something done. He may use something in one video that is just out of reach of most people, but then you watch another video and he's doing the exact same thing, but he's doing it by hand or with another method. And the point is that just because you see somebody using expensive tools or in this example, a vacuum press, that doesn't mean you have to have one. It's just something that makes the job a lot easier. I'm cutting my belt slots with a punch that I had custom made. For a one and a half inch belt, my punch is one and nine sixteenths inch by five sixteenths. Now I need to burnish the insides of the belt slots. I'm just applying a little bit of water on a sponge brush. That helps it burnish a little bit easier. For detail molding, I'm using a bone folder. This one is made of actual bone. There are cheaper versions that you can buy that are made of plastic, but I would not recommend them. They're too flexible and it's hard to really get the impressions and the detail in the leather because it's too flexible. Even though this holster pattern was intended to be a flat-backed holster, I'm still modeling some detail on the back side of the holster. This will help it retain the gun a little bit better and provide a little bit tighter fit.
To form the belt slots, I'm using a wooden blank that's basically the size of my belts. This will help preform them so that they can form better to the belt and to the body. It's adding a little bit more curve to the back of the holster. Here I'm using a pear shader to help smooth out some of the wrinkles. One of the benefits of vacuum forming is that you can start forming with the leather a little bit more wet than might otherwise be desired. But the vacuum pulls some of the moisture out of the leather, so it holds detail more quickly. If you find that your leather is too wet and it won't hold your detail, then you may need to hang it up to dry for a couple hours and come back to it to add more detail later. Right now I'm sealing the interior with a 50-50 mixture of Phoebing's acrylic resiline and water. Once it's had a little bit of time to dry, I come back with a modeling tool and smooth out all the rough fibers and polish the interior. After the interiors had a few minutes to dry, I come back and coat the exterior. I apply it liberally to each area of the holster to make sure that it soaks in really well. Try to get even coverage across the whole surface. Keep the outside wet uniformly so that you don't have dry spots and wet spots and then flip it over and do the back side. Do the same thing. Try to keep the whole surface wet and then slowly brush away the bubbles using less and less pressure as you go. But it is very important to keep the entire surface uniformly wet. A few minutes later, I come back and polish the edges and then hang it up to dry overnight. And here's the final product. I have to admit, when I started this holster two days ago, I had no idea how it was going to turn out. Not only have I never used this pattern making technique before, but I've also never made a holster for this gun. And like I said earlier in the video, I hardly ever make holsters for revolvers. I think this pattern technique may alleviate some of those fears on future builds because I don't know about you, but I'm extremely pleased with how this holster turned out on my very first try no less. If you'd like to make your own, I will have the pattern available on my website. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button. If you hated it, feel free to double click the dislike button. Either way, leave a comment down below and let me know what holster style you'd like to see me tackle next, or if there's something you'd like to see me do better on future builds. I do read every comment and try to reply to as many as I can. Till next time, take care.